102.2. So I asked Lance to find me the story from a non-conservative source, not from the Daily Caller, or from the Washington Times, or from Newsmax. And he found me, he says it's a story, I say it's an opinion piece from The Hill, um, which tells the story of how Steele said that, yeah, that, that operations uh, are going on out of the Miami, Russia's Miami con council, consulate, which does not exist. So they, you know, the State Department was aware of at least this era in the dossier. And I, I'll grant you the possibility that at, at some points in the process of, of the, the veracity of all of the dossier may have been overstated by some people, maybe even some people in the FBI. But your general argument is that because some of the dossier turns out to not be um, correct, that the whole thing is BS. And I've never claimed that the whole thing is correct, and I don't think that the author or anybody um, claims that the whole thing is correct. In fact, the author- Rick, Rick, what part is correct? I know the parts that the Mueller report say have been verified. And what parts are those, Rick? I don't know, I, but the thing I read yes, last week to the camera says that parts have been verified. What parts are those, Rick? I don't know. Do you know? No, no because I actually did read the dossier, and the only parts that are possibly verifiable are the ones where they just speculate that Putin has an interest in uh, Turkish politics and things like that. So, I mean, the words and and the are verifiable, but the the anything about Trump having uh, uh, being compromised by the Russians has not been verified. I don't, the, I don't know about that, but well, no, I. That's what the tr what the Mueller report says, Rick. No, no, there's a difference between colluding and being compromised. Okay, Rick, I read the dossier. I also heard the Mueller report and Barr's summary of the Mueller report. Well, they, all, they all say the same thing, no, that but, Trump didn't collude with Russia. The only person in America that still believes in the dossier is you. No. No, but and I'm not saying. Jeff, that tell me what in the dossier is true. I, if you want to break, yeah, again. yeah, let's break. I want you all to right. find the true all things. Right, all right, all right, okay, okay. Here we go. Break time. Break time. All right. Okay. All right. I found a long Washington Post article from April that lists all. We're the, we're in May, by the way. So yeah. it's it's recent. Yeah. Um, that lists. Uh, where the Mueller report has been verified or not verified, and a, a bunch of stuff. The report contained a bunch of stuff about Russia's efforts to mess with the campaign. And that's the stuff that's been verified. Everybody now agrees that Russia attempted to meddle with the campaign. Trump's, and what, it, it Trump, the deal with Trump is that what most people believe is that he wasn't actively uh, colluding with Russia and that he was just kind of sloppily opportunistic with taking advantage of some of the stuff that was going on with Russia. And it doesn't rise to the level of um, collusion or conspiracy. You, you, it does. Are I mean, you, are you finished? Well, so almost. Um, and the sensational stuff about Trump, like the the P tape, has there's no evidence of that. But it, it, so the stuff that's been verified from the dossier is the stuff that everybody agrees is true. That Russia was very actively trying to mess with the election in favor of Trump. No. No. And, and, and that's not even in the dossier. 
But apparently it is, because if you read that whole Washington Post article, it, it is. That that's the, the, they, much they, of the dossier isn't about Trump that's, specifically, but, that's, that's but is not, specific. That hasn't been verified. That, that there well, you're no, still going to argue that Russia was innocent at no, all? No, Russia messed with the election, but they, the, what the intelligence panels found was that they basically were doing things just to sow discord. They spent about $100,000 on Facebook ads, and that's about it. They, uh, they hacked the DNC. They... Um, they, nobody knows for sure what they thought, but um, it looks like they thought Clinton was going to get elected, and they were just releasing things to embarrass Clinton. Okay, all right, so, but so, anyway. But, you, but, but it, the, you have not shown me any place where the dossier was proven to be true. You know, that whole article lists where it's been proven. Yeah, I know, I read the article, and it's not. You read about it, a third it, of the article. No, actually, well, Okay, but the deal the is that you the asked, article obfuscates. the The article does not say where Trump colluded with the Russians. But that's not the that's, entire. But that's, but that's what the memo. That's what the dossier said. No, the the, the 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 entirety of the dossier isn't about Trump. M much of it is about what Russia was up. Then why do you? You keep, asked, but then you, why do you? No, hold on, hold on. Before we broke, you asked me to to show you what has been verified about the dossier. And right. I found this article that goes point by point through the dossier and says, this has been verified, this hasn't been verified. Most of what's been verified is about what Russia, I mean, whether it was, now we can argue about whether it was specifically to help Trump or whether it was just to create so discord in America, but most of what's been verified, according to this article about the dossier, has to do with Russia trying to fuck with the election. Yeah, but but nobody's arguing about that. Yeah, but you did. You're arguing that the dossier had, show me what's verified. So I showed you what's verified, yeah, and but, that's about Russia. All right, listen to me. Rick, every time I say that the dossier was used by the FBI to justify so that the Obama administration could uh, surveil the Trump team, and, and put spies in the Trump campaign, you say, oh, but the dossier was verified. It's all, it's true. I'm, and I'm so saying parts, parts of it are true. Yeah, parts, but the, parts, the, the, parts, but, parts. But then, but then if the, but, but the parts that you claim are true right now would not justify putting a spy on Trump. Maybe so, maybe you're, investigations will bear fruit and it'll no, turn no, but, out. But, but you, you've just told me, just now, just within three minutes, you told me that the parts of the, of the dossier that, that are true have nothing to do with Trump. So why would the Obama administration be justified in putting spies and surveillance on Trump? Because, well, Trump is the one who said rush, and anyway, in the interest of moving on, you can no, read no, the I Washington Post. No, no, I answer right now, Rick. Because Trump seemed to be the one who, to, who was benefiting from the Russian efforts. And it but, wasn't but clear. It doesn't, it doesn't say that the, the dossier does not verify that. The dossier is not proven to be true on that, Rick. But they didn't know at the time. So, but what I'm saying is, in the interest of moving on, I'm saying maybe further investigation of the investigators, which is what you're after at this point, and, and what is going on, will reveal that the FBI was overstepped reasonable bounds in surveilling Trump. And that's another thing where I can say, wait and see, because those investigations are going on. And it may prove you right, but let's move on. Did and you, real quick, do you think Trump committed obstruction of justice? Well, we didn't even get to that. But yeah, I think that the, uh, the, the allegations of obstruction of justice are more substantiated by the Mueller report than the allegations of collusion with Russia. 
So you think, oh God. And then, then, but let's not have the argument about whether you can obstruct justice when there's right, not yeah, a crime. So now he's got to defend it. Okay. But the, Rick, did, did Trump shut down the Mueller report? He, did he shut down the Mueller investigation? There are, a, the, the Mueller report makes 11. Did Trump shut down the Mueller investigation? According to some reports, he tried to get Mueller fired, but. But he, even if he did, would that shut down the investigation? And, and by the way, you can't obstruct justice by having if there's a conversation. A, so if he thought about firing Mueller, that's not obstruction of justice. If I think about hitting you in the face right now, that's not assault and battery. So, right. so when, do, how did he obstruct justice? Right? I know there's a list. If we, if you don't want to, and I don't want to break again, but there's a list of about eleven instances in the Mueller report where that can be seen as obstruction of justice. Okay. Not shutting down the Mueller report itself, but or the Mueller investigation itself, but eleven instances. We can do that another time. In the interest of moving on. It. All right, all right, fine. All We're right. going to so, move along, guys. There will be plenty of time to discuss this. I'm sorry. All right, so, so come down. here. Take, pick Rick up. wants to do science corner. Uh, I want to, before so we do that, start. I want to. Right. 2.4. I got to say that this guy, whom I argue with every week, we, we ignore what the beautiful work that he does. And so let's come on over here and just take a look at some specific This things. is a trap, by the way. I have no idea what they're planning. Now Lance would say that the, the lighting isn't right, that it doesn't show off his work to the best effect, but I mean, just take a look at some of the specific stuff. Look at this satin, what is this, a college gown or? It's, uh, it's for the purple queen's robe. Okay, but look at the satin there. It's freaking awesome. And then come over here. Look at this guy's profile and back and butt and legs. It's freaking here. Hold shoot, on. It you know, shoot it straight on, so you don't get, you know, uh, short. Sure. One second, okay. Okay, and then take a look at this hand painted panel from a Superman. Okay, start again. Take a look at this hand painted panel from this Superman comic. That's painted. And then just travel up, show the guy. Uh, What's step. his name? Uh, that was Robert. This is Robert. Lance frickin' painted him, what, 25 years ago? Yeah, I was just a kid back then. Yeah. Okay, so and then, point look, the things out again because I... Look I, at his, go up his leg, to his butt, to his, to his back, to his profile. It's just frickin' great work. Thank you. This is... This is some kind of trick. Yeah. And then, look, what's this guy's name with the purple hat? That's Earl. Look at Earl. We got two shots of Earl. Earl, Earl one, and then if you come over here, here's another shot of freaking Earl. Okay. okay, where are we? Have we done this already? No, we really haven't, because you're reluctant to, because not everything is, this is imperfect lighting. This is imperfect shooting because you like things only seen from you know the the, the, the best possible perspective. All right, all right. You well, know. Thank you very much. All right. So now we can go to well, science. Well, you said something about her earlier. Well I just her robe, I think. Because we don't want to show too much, you know, sexy parts, because this is an educational show. By the way, that's Lance's dad's actual Oscar picture. So now we can go on to Science Corner. Okay. Right. You can show the sculpture. You showed that sculpture. Yeah, I just wanted to avoid showing the uh, the wiener part because we don't need to show. Uh, look at this frickin' this. Why why don't you want to show the wiener? Because I mean, that's no, part of the work. Because it's an educational show, not a show wiener show. But I mean, Lance, would you argue with that? I mean, what? No, I mean the David has a wiener. I mean, it's yeah, just, but they, you know they covered up is David's this, wiener for centuries. Is this centuries. coming from a liberal? Oh my God. Yeah, but, the conservative is arguing you know, the liberal the, But part. look at this, you know, the back, the musculature there. Actually, show it with the thigh in front of the wiener so you can show the sculpture. All right, look at, the, you know, this whole, it, it's all frickin'. we got to see the wiener, come on. No wiener, no wiener, there's, that's... 
Come on. You, no, no wiener, no wiener. Lance, do we show the wiener? All right. I, I don't care. All right. There, did, if you, did you, all right, let's go, oh, here we go, all right, all right, let's do science corner. All right, science corner. All right, okay, I turned off the camera. Okay. All right. I just, uh, I, I would have been done with it a lot faster, but it's hard to keep Rick in the post, so uh, I'm still working on uh, the details. So let's go to, go to science corner, okay? All right, we, all right, 102.5, science corner. All right, when they, f I'm waiting for the robotic uh, surgeon, the, the surgery robot at UCLA. So I've still got 24 more days till they take the tumor out of me. When they discovered it, when they first measured it about eight weeks ago, it was 3.5 centimeters, a little bigger than an eyeball. I've been doing homemade chemo on it and it's now 3.1 centimeters, a little more than 10% smaller Though, that's not for sure because tumors are squishy and because, you know, it's not like they have cut me open yet to see it firsthand. They're using ultrasound and they're using an MRI to measure it. But it's still, it, it, it's apparently more than 10% smaller in diameter, which means it's more than 25% smaller by volume. I've got a tumor in my kidney. So, you know, it's so apparently the stuff I've been giving myself, fisetin, is killing the tumor a little bit. Or I'm optimistic that it is. Um, and that's good news in that for a couple reasons. One is that it, 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 the only thing that the fisetin does is. Um, give me diarrhea, which I can live with. I can have diarrhea every day, and it's not the worst thing in the world, um, except that the bleeding that goes with the diarrhea is bad, and I've got half the hemoglobin of a normal man, which they have to fix. And so I, I talked to my blood doctor, and I said, well, it, when you fix my blood with iron in, infusions, will my brain work better? And he said, yeah, so fucking watch out, Lance, because my brain's about to be good again. I wasn't paying attention. I'm severely anemic from all the pooping. Oh. And I've got half the amount of hemoglobin I should have. And the doctor says, ask me questions, ask me questions. And one of the questions was, will my brain work better when we get my hemoglobin back up? And he said, oh yeah. So for the first time in the history of the show, I, I, I won't be fighting with half my brain tied behind my back. So anyway, the physitin seems to uh, be slowly killing the tumor. And now I've got a new recipe, because I read, did some more research and it turns out I've been stirring the physitin into water, where it's not very soluble. It turns out if you stir the physitin into lipids, the lipids surround the physitin, and it's much more soluble in fat, especially special fats that have a molecular structure that surrounds uh, the, the target molecules and super soluble in this fat. And now when I take this stuff, you know, the, the diarrhea would hit me three hours after I took it dissolved in water. Dissolved in lipids, according to the papers I read, it might be four times as effective and it might have 47 times the bioavailability and I know something's happening because now I don't get hit with, the, the, the diarrhea is, is knocked down in severity, severity. And it doesn't hit me until instead, of, it hits me, it, it takes three times as long to hit me. So uh, the new formulation of this stuff might be even more killy of the tumor. And the deal is that nobody's very worried about the tumor, except for me. I mean, the doctors are, because they see the statistics that this kind of thing only has like a, a, a between a 3 and a 7% recurrence rate. Um, so they think when you, they take, that most people, when you pull out a tumor of this size, that you're done and just live your life and whatever. But, and there is chemo that's not very effective. 
that they can give people who are being killed by their, their kidney tumors, where it's metastasized or it's much bigger and it's just a more, you know, it's in a much more dire state. But they wouldn't give me chemo with my three to seven percent risk of recurrence because chemo can cost eight to ten thousand dollars a month. And the, the Republicans talked and chemo fucks you up, you know, it makes you really sick. So that, you know, the, one of the more popular chemos for kidney stuff, it's, it's like four weeks on, two weeks off. You go on four weeks and then you take two weeks to recover from the, the damage that the kid, the, the, the awfulness of the chemo. Um, also, um, it's just no insurance company would okay something that costs a hundred grand to knock down the risk of recurrence from like 5% to 2%. You know, that's, you know, the, the, the insurance company would expect you to take your chances with that you know, that, that very low probability of recurrence. But if this stuff, this fisetin, um, is killy of the tumor, then this gives me something I can use for maintenance and mop up after the operation. It's cheap, you know, for five bucks a day. I can, you know, any like stray cells that didn't get picked up in the operation, I can try to, you know, slowly kill them and or any you know other similar stuff arising for whatever reason you know i can police against that by taking this stuff every day because um this is it doesn't the only thing it does is is make me have to go to the bathroom and i can live with that so the whole thing is a little bit exciting but we won't really know if it's really knocked down the size of the tumor for another three and a half weeks when they pull it out of me. That's it, science court. Uh, did you want to talk about exorcism? Yeah, so there was some story in the news about exorcism. Is that the deal? Mm -hmm. the, what, the, the, the va what was the story? The, the Vatican priest says that temptation is actually more dangerous than the actual exorcism per se. So what you're, what, that, that people who are tempted by ungodly things in the world. The devil. The devil. That, that I guess the, 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 the dis, he's distinguishing between people using their free will and falling for temptation from the devil is worse than when the devil just takes over and is running your body like a meat puppet. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a sciencey guy, so I would tend to look at, at both aspects of, you know, I would look at temptation and being run as a meat puppet. I would look for unreligious y explanations for stuff. For instance, you know, schizophrenia, uh, where your brain breaks down to the point where you think signals coming from your brain are actually coming from outside yourself, voices and, and hallucinations you know, can, can account for some of the things that uh, look like demon possession. Um, and beyond that, I don't have a lot of stuff to say. You know, because I don't know beans about exorcism besides what I've seen in movies. Lance? Um, well, uh, can I sit oh, over here? All right. So, um, the answer for me is I do believe in exorcism. Uh, I, I, I believe in exorcism. Am I okay? I don't know if I, I believe that you can hear me right now. Uh, I, I, uh, I think I said somewhere on this show before that I have seen a ghost. So, uh, and I'm not going to discuss that. <laughs> But uh, I do believe in the supernatural. Um, so I, I think exorcism is possible. Um, but uh, what, the, what the priest was saying was that temptation was a worse problem 
than the devil making you do things. And my f- suspicion is that I, I, I firmly believe that nobody does anything unless they feel justified in doing it. So um, when they, when they, and I, I learned that when I was very young, uh, and it's always proven to be true. In that, that, even the, when in you that, do something bad, you're like, well, I'm just a weak person, and that. It, there's always an excuse, and 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 I find that criminals have this. In other words, there are there are um, they've analyzed criminals' mentality, and they feel. They, they say, they lie to themselves. They, they tell themselves a reason why what they're doing is okay. And, and I am not a psychiatrist. I haven't read any studies. But I, I heard this, and it, it's always proven true. And I see it in myself, too, that I have to be very careful to avoid justifying doing the wrong thing. Uh, and, and like for example, even when a, when a criminal harms you, he feels like he has a right to do it. Can I say? So wait, so I just want to tie that in with temptation. But let me, can I I, let me say think, one thing about I you. I'm going think, to compliment I don't, you. I, well, wait until I'm done. That's the kind of, I don't think temptation is the issue. I don't think people are tempted to do something that they know is wrong. I think they know it's, uh, they think it's justified, and that's why they do it. So I don't think temptation, in other words, if, if all that was happening was people were getting irresistible urges to harm other people, that would be a matter of temptation. But I think it's more complex than that. All right, what were you going to say? I, I, I think that you're very good at exercising willpower and fighting temptation. You, I mean, I thought there's some, among others, I mean, you go to work for 10 hours a day, six, seven days a week. Yes. You, I, you know, I sit at home and I, I'm constantly distracted by the riches of the internet. Um, and you, you show incredible dedication. And so, your, the, the theological structure that you, you've built for yourself, I think, is, has been good at. You're, you don't, you're not weak in terms of willpower. Well, you know, I will say this, though. <coughs> As, you see, you, you own a home. You have a successful marriage and a successful child. And you've also uh, had a great success in your career. Um, you didn't accomplish the things that you wanted to in every field, but my problem is I don't feel I've accomplished much in my chosen field, and I don't have a home and a wife and kids. So for me, the situation is far more desperate. I have a lot more to prove. Uh, well, not just to prove, but just to accomplish, to justify uh, my existence. Nevertheless, if, even if you lived in a beautiful home on the hill in, in Malibu, you'd still be working in your studio. Almost. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But, but the part of the reason is that there is so much to accomplish. I, I was just saying the other day to my friend that I, I don't have time to die. I can't die. I have too much to do. I've got too much work to do. So uh, it, it uh, my feeling is that I have uh, I have left very little behind. To I feel like I have a message for the world, and I don't think I've ever shared that message to be conveyed via your art, not by be, yelling once a week. Right. I mean, the thing that we're talking about on this show is you're trying to get uh, Beto O'Rourke elected or, or Pocahontas elected or Bernie Sanders and I'm trying to get Trump elected. That is not my personal... You mean Brocahontas. That's the, the hashtag term for Trump this week because it was revealed that he 
lost $1.17 billion between 1985 and 1994. Yeah, that was when his casinos went bust. No, they went bust in the subsequent 10 years, from 95 to 05. Right, but he's he scratched his way out. I mean, he, he's been very open about that. Yeah, but that. Invest, investors in Trump casinos lost 99% of their money. And, and all the other Atlantic City casinos went up too. The Atlantic City went bust and took everybody with it. Yeah, but in the 10 year period, 95 to 05, when Trump casinos were operating, all the other casinos were up hundreds of percent. Right, and they are all, are there any casinos in Atlantic City anymore? I assume there are a few, still a few shitty ones left, but yeah, So not. that, I mean, the, the great revelation. He was, he was losing a buttload of money when everybody else was making a buttload of money. Well, I mean, the, there are two issues there. Uh, the first is that the New York Times made a big deal about having discovered this. About no, it, a lot of it was known. Well, it was known because, because he's done a series of, uh, uh, I think there was a book, and uh, the, first, uh, the first show of The Apprentice, he announced that he considers one of his greatest achievements to be that he went bust and that he scratched his way back and is now a multi-billionaire. So I, I don't think the, the point you're making has any meaning whatsoever. I don't think it's important at all. And, and it certainly wasn't a secret. So anyway, I think that's about it for our show tonight, isn't it? Uh, I think they've been entertained. <laughs> Are you familiar with the the, uh, the new uh, name he gave to what's it, Pete Buttigieg? You mean Alfred E. Newman? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and people were making fun of him because that's a people were calling it a you know a fifty year old reference. But I think even you know millennials know Alfred E. Newman. It's not like Mad Magazine has gone out of business. Well, I would just like to say that. Um, for a long time, people that have seen Adam Schiff have said, and I think you even said this, that his head is too big for his neck, or his neck is too small for his head. And, Basically, and, it looks wait, like he's got a, a skinny neck. And then, and then Trump... If he were a lady, he would wear pearls like Barbara Billingsley did on Leave it to Beaver because she was self-conscious about her skinny neck. And, and, and our president, who is not only a brilliant president, but a, a master of, of, of uh, metaphor, has actually given him the name Pencil Neck. And I thought, wow, Trump sees the same thing. He sees the truth. He just has the courage to speak it. I don't know. I'd rather have Adam Schiff's neck than Trump's neck. Um, How do you feel about and, and you don't. You can have a skinny neck and be an effective politician. I don't know why Schiff has a skinny neck. I know why I don't have a particularly skinny neck because I used to go to the gym every day, and this other guy and I would work each other's neck. He, I'd lie down on a bench, and he'd take a towel and he'd push on my head, and I'd push back, and then I'd turn 90 degrees, and he'd push on the side of my head. I, I, I think your neck, I don't know, I, I, it feels, it feels kind of one liberal to go. All right, thank you. Real, real quick though, how do you feel about Trump taking charge of the 4th of July celebration? What, you oh, he's he's going to take over the, the National Mall and the Lincoln Memorial and give a speech on July 4th before there are fireworks. I don't know, it just seems Trumpy and, and you know, freaking, do we have, there's just so much stuff goes on with regard to Trump and the, I don't know, I get, we have Trump, I have Trump fatigue. But I mean, you know, other people didn't, I mean, if, it would be very exciting if, if he's giving a speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial and, and you know, twenty-two foot marble Lincoln stands up and you know thwack, gets out of his chair and walks over to Trump and thwacks him in the head with his big <laughs> marble hand. But short of that, you know, it's just another Trumpy thing. 
All right. Well, I'm 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 glad that we could wrap this up, but without Rick saying anything about North Korea coming back at us again. So thank you very much for a wonderful show, and uh, I guess Trump didn't solve the Korea situation just yet. Shall we wrap it up? Thank yeah, you. Yes, Give us thank money. You. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. <laughs>